Gee, I wonder if Buzz Lightyear was going to be around in this particular futuristic space uh, stationery and stuff. But I don't think he's actually going to come by because even then, that he's from the forms of the Space Ranger from the Intergalactic Federation or something like that. Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am Piglet here once again. <coughs> Excuse me, and I am from the likes of the Maxi Toys videos, of course. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more let's play of Kirby's Epic Yarn slash Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn for the Nintendo Wii and possibly for the new Nintendo 3DS. So, yeah, last time we actually did manage to completely deal with the rest of the remainings of those uh, few sets of challenges and whatnot, like specifically the Sea Keys Hide and Seek challenges and Beatrix's Run and especially noticeable for Kerry's transport, and especially noticeable with uh, the forms of Buster's trading. And um, yeah, that's all I can really say about this. So yeah, today for this episode, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that we're going to be taking on the forms of the sixth main world of this game, uh, Spaceland. Not to be confused as Spaceland as far as the main, one of the main boards from Mario Party 2. So yeah, it's kind of interesting right there. But, uh, I will admit though right away though, although before I talk anything more onto that, here's the first level in the forms of, uh, Space Land we have is Future City, so, let's get into this. Now, as far as I'm aware for this kind of stuff, um, out of all the worlds we're gonna be run into, I think to me though, Space Land is actually one of my least favorite worlds of the entire game. It's nothing awful or anything, it's just how the fact that well, the way the matter is though is that this is where the game starts to get pretty difficult at the very end, especially noticeable where we get to the true final world of the game, which we'll get we'll definitely get into that as soon as we get to a couple of parts up ahead. So even then though, that for the most part though, we're most likely gonna have to concentrate on Spaceland uh, as for, as far as this point. So Right from the start though, we're actually going to be riding onto this particular roller coaster sequence right there. And if we jump off from that little, if you're going to hang onto that ladder, we get ourselves the ending slice. One of those ending slices, I should say. So, yeah, expecting so that things can get a little bit worked out as far as- Whoa! Blimey, that almost going to crash me. <laughs> I will never do that in such a thing of the forms of like roller coasters sometimes, because roller coasters are extremely dangerous. If you manage to stand right in front of them, and then you weren't able to easily just fly off the forms of the actual, like, railings and all that stuff, if you know what I'm saying for this, right? So, yeah, what's wrong, uh, what's to be said about the positive things, aside from your, well, I'll get to all that later, because we have ourselves these UFO enemies. The UFO enemies are by far the most annoying enemies in this world, because it's bad enough how the fact that, um, unlike any, un any other other games in the series that uh, they managed to come towards you and then they're just trying to stand completely still and then you would you would able to actually get an, an ability to able to actually transform into a UFO copy ability in the previous games but um, in this if they always move all over the place and also not to mention that if you do not try to able to actually grab him just in time uh, he will try to able to actually shoot out a lot of uh, lasers right at you so Here's the space monitor right there. I think this might actually be the final treasure to able to actually claim. To able to actually just to deal with the forms of the final room that in your forms of the uh, quantity square um, building. So you can then know that uh, expecting so, then we can able to actually just, uh, well, do even more challenges as long as we can able to actually just like, although I'm probably not going to do that right now though, because I might actually going to have to concentrate on to the actual, um, you know, the main world itself, so, excuse me, and, um, yeah, that's all I usually, usually as far as I can say for this point right there, so, yeah, aside from that, though, uh, today was actually a form of, uh, the 25th of September, in this case, in 2018, so we've naturally, we've only got ourselves six more days to go, until the forms of October starting, and also by the forms of the celebration for, uh, not only by the forms of the Luigi's Mansion uh, port on the 3DS, but also by the forms of Super Mario Party and uh, also uh, pretty much other games coming out during a later time later down the road. Like I don't know about that, but even then I might as well be able to find out and see what happens until when if I decide to pick up more stuff here and there. So. Of course, as you can see right there, we have ourselves the returning uh, saucer um, transformation. I might, I might as well able to call this uh, saucer uh, transformation because um, 
It doesn't have anything specific than that with that specific name, but if I've uh, learned that by the forms of uh, uh, one of those YouTubers out there, they uh, attempt to upload um, all the transformations, all the, all the transformations from uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn, so that way uh, it makes it a little bit more of a sense of what the actual names were, so... Yeah, I must confess right about now, I'm just getting confused at this point, so... So yeah, um, as far as I've mentioned this before, that Space Line is easily one of my least favorite worlds of the game. It's nothing awful by any means, because of that though, uh, the music is still great, it's basically noticeable how the fact that it takes place in outer space. One thing that's kind of strange though, is the fact that every single in, in, in every single Kirby games, they always try to able to actually go through outer space, um, setting. Like, it does that in any forms of, uh, uh, let's just say Rainbow Resort from Kirby's Adventure and uh, Milky Way Wishes from Kirby Superstar and especially noticeable with the forms of uh, uh, Ca Candy Constellation from uh, An Amazing Mirror and especially noticeable with the forms of Gamble Galaxy from Kirby Mouse Attack so seriously what is up with um, trying to able to actually explore for those uh, galaxy stages or even outer space levels which I don't mind about it too much because it's so cool and everything but, uh, and also I do really like the atmosphere of the forms of that specific, uh, world itself. It's so very, very, uh, vibrant looking, especially noticeable how the fact that we're gonna be constantly gonna get, go inside, uh, the forms of, uh, terminal stations and stuff like that, which I thought was very, very cool, and especially noticeable with these very cool aesthetics to it. So even then, I really don't mind about this. And, uh... Also, by the forms of how the fact that uh, some of these different mechanics and stuff like that we're going to be hitting into later on, they are very kind of cool to use, or in this case, try to able to actually be very cool to able to get used to with it. But my only problem with this level, though, is the fact that since this game's going to get progressively difficult as you proceed to the game, uh, sometimes it just gets a tad bit more difficult, especially noticeable with these stupid UFO enemies that love to get in your way. And by the way, you know these uh, UFO enemies as well as I mentioned this before? They are very annoying to deal with in this level though, and yeah, I seem to accidentally fall off, so, whoops. And, not to mention because of how the fact that this game could get progressively difficult until we get to the very end, and, uh, there's gonna be so many ways you can able to actually fall off in the actual stage, like the forms of bottomless pits, uh, knockback occurrence or something like that. I, I don't think the knockback is gonna bother me, because even then, the knockback, the, the knockback, doesn't seem to able to actually be more in common for this game, other than, um, other than the forms of the other retro games that you usually attempt to have that, so... Anyways though, and, uh, also another thing is the fact that if you accidentally get one simple mistake, um, if you're about to get yourselves a whole bunch of beats, uh, chances are you might actually lose a whole bun of them if you did not pay attention to the level design as much, but, um, as far as I'm aware though, because of how the fact that the game starts to get pretty difficult, especially noticeable with the forms of how the fact that in this world, for instance, that there's going to be a lot of bottomless pits heavy, so even then though, well to be more specifically in this level in particular, even especially noticeable when we get to like, uh, I would say the, uh, the fourth level, um, after the third level, because of that, um, there's going to be so many ways you can able to actually just, uh, fall down to the pit, getting hit by stuff, and also just pretty much everything else for this resignable, so, yeah, that's how it usually goes, so, but apart from that, though, it's a very decent, uh, level at best, at least for my understand understatements for that, really, but the only problem with that is that if you mess up at least once or twice, you're gonna lose a lot of those speeds, and not to mention with those hero foe enemies, they really, really trying to able to actually just beat the crap of likes out of you, I mean, that will be very, very, very nasty looking. So anyways, here's the, uh, the final roller coaster sequences. They kind of reminds me of the forms of these bone coasters from New Super Mario Bros. Wii, almost. Except it doesn't feel as, uh, threatening as, uh, you know, the forms of New Super Mario Bros. Wii, uh, bone coasters stuff and all that stuff. Now the reason why we're gonna be jump onto another roller coaster right there, onto the top portion, because if you go to the one on the bottom for the, uh, at this whole time, uh, basically you won't be getting as many items as you think. Other than that, if we go all the way from there, then we get ourselves the third and final treasure, which appears to be the theme of the future city. So, that's how it goes, obviously, and there's the end of the level right there. So, 
Yeah, it's not too bad for the most part though, but it's just how the fact of the matter is though, that you will lose a lot of those speeds if you're not being cautious enough with the forms of bottomless pits and everywhere and everything else for this residable, but still, that could be something that usually just comes up as more often. So there we go, that concludes Future City, and we've got ourselves the, uh, it appears to be a plug patch of any sort, so that way we could able to actually place that on, I'm presuming this might actually be something to do with the monitor that we saw from the forms of the actual hub world itself. And also we've actually unlocked the next set of uh, stages, well, at least one of them by the forms of the Sea Keys Hide and Seek challenges, so hopefully we can able to get to that after this world is done. So let's see what's the next stage, Tube Town. Who knows, maybe we can able to actually get inside the forms of the actual technology inside the actual television right there. Tube Town, which appears to be more accurately a circuit board type of environment because, well, as you might expect it, because how, you know how electronics, usually how it works, but it forms of like, uh, game consoles and all that stuff, especially with every kind of technology at the time. Um, basically the, the way how this goes is the fact that, well, we're gonna be going inside the actual circuit boards or something like that, so, yeah, it seems promising altogether. So anyways, uh, the first treasure is right over there, self-explanatory for the most part, so we got a digital clock. So, um, I really do like the music of this level though, it does make it a little bit more of a perfect, uh, tune to this, because even then, we're actually going inside the actual circuit board and all that stuff, which is very cool. Even then though, it kind of reminds me of the forms of, uh, one of those mini-games that you played in, uh, let's just say Mario Party DS that uh, one of those uh, mini games you played is the forms of uh, uh, shortcut circuit. Uh, basically, you can able to actually grab as many coins for that particular mini game. It kind of reminds me of that, except, well, it's just a platformer game and not so much a mini game or something like that. So, well, I digress, enough about that. So, um, and also that if you remember from uh, Donkey Kong Jr., there appears to be another NES game uh, classic, or and also that came out on the arcade machines here and there as well. Uh, basically, uh, just like in Donkey Kong Jr., and to be more specifically, I'm pursuing the third stage or the fourth stage. I've already looked it up on Donkey Kong Jr. for quite some time now, but um, I'm thinking, if I'm guessing this correctly, it might actually be something based off from the third stage. And, uh, basically what happens is, is the fact that, uh, if you really want to able to actually dodge a lot of those little, uh, zappy parts from the, uh, actual, like, uh, electrical line, uh, basically we have to jump over it, because of that, uh, if you accidentally touch by the electrical part, uh, you will able to, again, lose your beats drastically. See, so Fernando is have to stay sharp on that one, especially that, how the fact that, well, you know, you get the job for this part. So, anyways, we've got ourselves an estimation mark going on right there. And we need to follow that until we're able to actually find the, uh, the secret alcove before we're able to actually just find. In fact, it's already been directly from over there. So, we need to figure that out. How do we able to get there? Well, uh, I think that's where the actual timing, uh, timing our specific jumps comes into play, like for instance right there, and there we go, we've got ourselves the theme of the tube town, so how about that then? And of course the third and final treasure is going to be an, just a little furniture placement, so yeah that's how it goes, obviously. So um... Again, there's not much else I can really say about this video, honestly, guys, because other than that, uh, recently I've managed to able to pre-order myself the forms of uh, Luigi's Mansion 3DS for the Nintendo 3DS because of how the fact that I can able to actually just go ahead and excuse me and uh, decide to able to actually go for the first game again, but this time on the 3DS. I'm probably not going to invite one of my friends over for cooperative aspects because I've heard several of. Uh, problems with the forms of the actual two-player co-op aspect in Luigi's Mansion for the 3DS. Uh, not so much issues in the forms of Luigi's Mansion 2 because it makes perfect sense for uh, uh, scare scraper mode and all that stuff for multiplayer aspects. But on the other hand though, uh, when it comes to Luigi's Mansion the original game ported over to the forms of the 3DS, uh, the frame rates, uh, you know, 
drops quite significantly though, and uh, that can get pretty obnoxious every once in a while, especially when the frame rate is actually going really worse than that. So I think I think I should probably be, be more comfortable with just myself because obviously you know how the fact that in the first uh, first Luigi's Mansion game is more likely focusing on just a single player experience because you, you know uh, you can able to actually just play as Luigi for this entire uh, journey throughout the game. Even especially noticeable that how the fact that if you only played the GameCube version before and getting used to more on that, then you weren't able to actually expect it to able to have no issues there on the 3DS version, but there are some slight changes, like the forms of, um, let's say they n they now going to be added in some more cutscenes due to, like, some vines appeared onto those doors, and sometimes they don't, so even then, though, that makes it a little bit more of a, I don't know, kind of like, I don't know, I'm just making things up, so anyways. So yeah, for the most part, though, uh, Tube Town wasn't that too difficult or anything, but, um, Again, it's just one of those things how the fact that if you made several mistakes like uh, Like if I crouch it from here and then, then yeah, I made a mistake there so But it's the reason why I'm going in here because of the circuitry work For that uh, third and final treasure on this particular level so yeah, that's how it goes So um Yeah, uh, other than that um Well, there's not much else, uh, not much else I can really tell for this point folks because even then Getting close towards the end of September, already from the start though. And I will say this right now, that I'm um, definitely not going to end this Let's Play off until uh, before uh, the beginning of October. Because there's going to be a really, really long gap in between uh, both of those titles to be running for Let's Play's department at the moment. And uh, also another thing is the fact that because recently that Mickey Mouse has recently finished up with his uh, redo Let's Play of Sonic and the Secret Rings, and uh, because of that, though, he decided to able to finish that redo Let's Play off uh, before he able to actually go running out of ideas uh, syndrome again. So even then, though, that might actually will happen right there. So yeah, that's as far as you can see of how this all turns out. So there we go. That concludes, uh, you know, uh, Tube Town. And uh, hopefully we can able to actually get even more beats as a result of that tradition. So there we go. And we've got ourselves the Radio Waves um, patch. And we've actually unlocked the another mission for uh, Carrie's transport. Probably the most, probably the more difficult ones to able to actually just to encounter. But again, we'll save that for the later portion of these some of these parts. And from here, we can actually able to unlock the next level. As far as you can see, with those UFOs, they're now coming down. And the level is mysterious UFO. Now, Mysterious UFO is actually a bit of a fun level, because even then, uh, if you remember from um, Super Paper Mario, well, one of those chapters in that game, but it forms of level 4-2, or chapter 4-2, uh, basically, it's all about a graffiti you're going to have to deal with right there. That could be the same applies for this particular stage. But, although, except the only major difference is this time, is the fact that in order to actually just to uh, reach higher places, but it forms of the usage of gravity, uh, we got to pull out that particular uh, knob right there on that little red uh, knot right there until you're able to actually just uh, unravel that and then you weren't able to actually just turn on the gravity and sometimes you can actually turn it off. So that's very cool with this particular level as far as we already know about this at this point in time. And of course if we go over there we get ourselves the first treasure. So we've got the communicator. So yeah, that's how it usually goes off from it from there. And as you can see, I cannot perform the forms of the ability to able to actually break those blocks, as you can see there. Uh, because the reason being for that is because we're still on the actual gravity mode. Uh, because of that though, we need to able to actually just to switch off the gravity before we're able to actually just decide to able to use that uh, ground pound technique. Because of that, uh, if you turn it off, then you weren't able to go back to its normal state. So yeah, that's how it goes though, eh? So, anyways. Alright, so let's go ahead and continue on forward. And, uh, now, every now and then we're going to have to do with a little bit a little bit of platforming every once in a while. Especially noticeable we don't uh, fall down to that bit over there. Just because, if we, again, if we accidentally touch these uh, electrical parts of the actual level, um, basically, you know, just you lose a lot of those speeds. So you can just have to watch out for those. So, 
Yep, I can definitely see how this will turn out to be for this point. So, um, anyway, though, I don't think there's any much else I can really talk for this point, folks, other than that. Um, recently, about the fact that, um, there's also another thing I just want to point things out, is the fact that recently, that, um, Sword Art Online is about to be coming over to the Nintendo Switch, but it forms of the video game counterparts of the forms of, um, Sword Art Online, which is probably my favorite anime, um, at this point in time. I'm on side with Dragon Ball Z, because I really dig into those two very much, so, even then though, they've actually got, gonna get a release of, uh, the Hollow Resurrection, and especially noticeable with the forms of Fatal Bullet, coming over to the Nintendo Switch. I'm not sure about the Lost Song, and especially noticeable with the Hollow Fragment, and all that stuff, but I could assume this might be something to do with, like, uh, PC Steam owners only, or maybe it's completely something else. I haven't really looked upon research on those kind of things just yet, though, but even though that makes it a little bit more of a some uh, newbies out there, they much to able to do not know what I'm talking about for this situations will go. And I don't meant to able to go from there, because obviously I need to uh, find something that's usually on the bottom right corner. Like, if we manage to unravel this over, there we go, we got an estimation mark point here. And that way we could able to actually just to go ahead and, um, you know, trying to go all the way up to the top. And we can able to follow along and also at the same time turn off this grab uh, device off. And, um, hopefully we can able to actually just to unravel this particular, uh, window of all things until we get the space food. What is this, like, Pizza Planet and stuff like that from Toy Story? Well, usually as far as we already know about the Pizza Planet, because that's the most iconic moment in every Pixar film at this point in time. But anyways, though, um, from here we need to go ahead and just turn the gravity uh, thing on back on. And then, as a result, we can able to actually just go ahead and do even more platforming with this little floaty jumps and whatnot. So, yeah, that's how it goes, obviously. So yeah, it's a pretty fun level altogether though, because even then, you can actually just manage to able to, and also, that not to mention, you can't able to break those blocks with the forms of the ground pounding technique. Uh, you cannot also just manage to kill those enemies when you're doing a ground pound technique. So even then though, that, well, that's all I can really matter for this point, because even then, um, yeah, it doesn't really bother me too much, other than that, well, it can be very uh, nerve-wracking at points, because, you know, there's going to be too many bottomless pits, as you can tell, for this point right there. And, especially noticeable, if you accidentally just manage to slip off at one point or another, um, you were able to lose a lot of those beats if you, like, uh, fall down to the pit by complete accident, so... From here, this is where we get ourselves the third and final treasure in this level, which appears to be the theme of Spaceland, and, uh... Yeah, from my knowledge, this might actually be one of the most difficult treasures to obtain from, because of how the fact that you have to do a chain reaction until you're able to actually decide to able to just create uh, one projectile from one enemy to another, so... But even then, uh, I, found that to be, I found that part to be not much of an issue there, because even then, uh, I always know what I was going to be doing for this point, so anyways, let's ground pound from here, and we need to get ourselves our star beads in case if we need some for even more beads grinding, especially noticeable by the forms of the last remaining uh, fabrics that we can able to buy from the fabric shop and stuff like that, and especially noticeable with the last few uh, furnitures and all that stuff, which can be also be obtainable, so nah, I did not make it, oh well. Let's try it again, and hopefully we can able to actually speed things up a little bit, especially with that little projectile decides to roll down on that particular point, as you can see. And that way we could able to get ourselves the third and final piece of the ending wheel, so... Yeah, that's how it goes, obviously. But we've not done yet, because obviously we need to deactivate the actual gravity uh, device, so that way we could able to go up, and um, hopefully we can actually turn this off. And we can able to actually just go ahead and go all the way down to the bottom, and we can pretty much guarantee of how this will turn out. So, yeah, that's how it goes, obviously, for the actual levels gimmick, I suppose. So, anyways, though, let's go ahead and just ground pound from here, and as a result, the end of the level is just right there. So, yeah, no, not too many issues right there, other than that. So, yeah, and let's see what um, bonus we've can get sweet 500 beads 
How about that then, huh? Do -do 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 -do. Lovely. And we've got ourselves our next patch for the forms of uh, space land. So, anyways, that pretty much does it for a uh, mysterious UFO. Again, very fun level, especially noticeable with the graffiti uh, mechanic of this level. So, so we've got ourselves a twinkling star patch, and we've actually unlocked the next stage for the Buster uh, trading stages. But again, we're not going to get into those just yet though, until we're able to actually finish up the entire world first. And, um, yeah. So that way it creates a constellation as far as I can see there, which leads us to the Stellar Way. Which, uh, might be very difficult though, because I think that's the only level I've actually got into when it's the first time I played this game, because... Oh, jeez, I just got so frustrated with this level sometimes, because... Well, not so much right now, but, but during back in the day that I remembered, that it did took me a long time to able to actually complete the level like this. Even especially noticeable how the fact that the main gimmick of this level, as far as you can see how this all goes out, um, basically we're gonna, we're gonna have to dodge, I mean, like, dodge, like, immediately dodge those meteor showers. And even especially no noticeable in asteroids as well. Because of that, uh, again, if you get hit by these asteroids and stuff like that, uh, again, you lose your beats if you manage to accidentally touch them. But, um, especially noticeable, it doesn't help how the fact of the matter is, though, is that this level was going to be a lot of bottomless pits everywhere every nowadays. So, as a result of that tradition, well, we're going to have to able to actually just, uh, well, uh, be very careful and be very cautious at the same time. Because if you do not pay attention to that whatsoever, well, chances are you might as well fall and just lose your beads in the process, and you might as well be able to actually, uh, get back into that respawning point. So, that's very obvious where this uh, stimulation will go. So anyways, if you if you actually activate the forms of that specific uh, estimation mark um, B, as far as you can see how this will turn out, uh, you can actually uh, turn those meteor showers uh, into these little uh, shooting stars into beads, which I think is actually a very good way to able to actually grind for beads to get the gold medal from. And even especially noticeable that how the fact that um, you know how the fact that you don't want to lose too many of your beads, because if you lose too many times, then you're probably not going to make it to your gold medal, or else, well, you know exactly what I mean. But, um, yeah, that's far as I can really uh, establish that from the actual level itself, as far as descriptions goes. So, yeah, it's very tricky for the most part, though, especially noticeable with these little unpredictable um, enemies, like, for instance, these UFOs can get pretty unpredictable, just like the ones in Future City, and all that stuff, because even then, they can really rank, uh, they can really just try to damn hurt you sometimes, even compared to how it does it in, uh, any other Kirby games, which I have no issues with them, but for some reason, they just becomes, like, I don't know, very unpredictable at times, even though they move all over the place, as far as I've said this before, and especially noticeable how the fact that um, if you really want to able to create a, a, a projectile of all things with the forms of the actual UFO, blimey, you're gonna have to be exactly right on with that specific stuff like this, and uh, as a result, then yeah, it's a lot of trial and error situation sometimes. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get ourselves the Star Lolly. I will admit though right away, I'm not looking forward to this level though, I will admit right away. Although, there's actually a cool thing at the very end, but we'll save that until we get to the very end. As far as I might as well able to say this right now. And, uh, at least the music is very cool enough, but it's just how the way the fact of the matter is though, is that if you made se several mistakes in this level for instance, like, fall down to the bottomless pit below, and especially noticeable with these unpredictable UFO enemies, um, you will essentially gonna have to able to actually give yourselves a lot of frustration and trial and error situations sometimes. Even I can I cannot imagine if I was gonna be able to do this level within uh, the devilish mode on the 3DS version. I mean that will be very 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 unbelievable if you say that much. Anyways, uh, okay, good. There's actually a little a uh, little bit of a gribbly thing going on there, so that way we can able to actually get back on track here. So. And also, take a notice from uh, the Clockwork Ruins Galaxy from Super Mario Galaxy 2. Uh, there's going to be one of those moments of how the fact that if you want to, if you really want to get those remaining collectibles, like those beads, for instance, well, there's actually another way you can able to actually get just about to get them, 
by simply just hopping onto another side of this rotating platform. So, self-explanatory, and yeah, that's all you usually get. So, there we go. Now, you need to be very, very, very careful right there, especially noticeable. This area right there is fully bottomless pit. See, Fernando, that we need to be extremely accurate with jumps and stuff like that. Actually, kind of think about it, there's actually a start beat from inside there. Which, thankfully, though, I've managed to got that for that specific point there. And, uh, what else that I was going to be thinking of is see if I... Oh, there's another start beat there, so let's go ahead and quickly just grab it very, very carefully. There we go. And hopefully we can able to climb up to that ladder and see what's in here. And it appears to be a third um, piece, if I'm assuming this right. And I think if I remember correctly, I actually accidentally missed out the uh, the third and final piece of the en actual ending wheel or something like that. Which, I'm not sure if that's if, but still. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, get this third and final treasure in this particular level. We have the rocket bed. And that pretty much does it, I think. So, although I'm still a little bit off for that specific gold medal requirement, but don't worry, we'll get to that shortly afterward. And not to mention because of how the fact that we need to dodge a lot of those meteor showers. So, expecting if you do not dodge those well enough, then you might lose these uh, beads so easily. It doesn't help how the fact that those beads were actually scattered all over the place, and it doesn't help how the fact that if the one of those beads uh, managed to get into the bottomless pits and stuff like that. Uh, you cannot eat. You cannot easily grab them anymore. So even then, though, that we have to be stay sharp and be very, very, very cautious with this for the most part. But as long as you're able to get yourselves a gold medal like I do here, then you will be fine. So, all right. So not bad, but um, still, it can be a little bit of a trial and error situation as far as that's been concerned. And here is folks, here's the forms of our brand new transformation to ourselves, and this time around though, here's Rocket Kirby. What is this like? Rocket! Except it's not like uh, Sonic Colors or anything, like you can just simply just blast off instantly. But no, instead, every time you've actually transformed into the forms of the actual Rocket transformation, uh, what that does is that the hell the fact that if you remember playing uh, Galico or something like that, uh, basically, you can able to actually do like a shoot 'em up. See, so then know that um, what you can do with it is the fact that you can able to actually shoot a lot of enemies. And uh, even though sometimes I'm not exactly a pure expert on the forms of the top-down perspective shoot 'em up games, I will admit that right away. But um, aside from that, though, because of how the fact that I'm pretty used to at this at this point, so even then, though, that makes it very obvious at the very end of the stage. So. Yeah, I'm quite surprised. We're actually on the halfway point already in the forms of Spaceland, and then not to mention though, but in forms of, uh, by the way, these UFOs are very e easily the most annoying enemies in this uh, sequences like this, for instance. Because of that though, it takes so many hits to kill them, and also these lasers are very hard to dodge sometimes, because they always come in with a diagonal formation. Well, it's not so bad for the jellyfish looking enemy, but it's just the way with the UFO enemies, they are very, very hard to predict sometimes, even with the forms of the actual lasers itself. And even especially noticeable with the forms of like, of how on earth are you supposed to able to dodge a lot of the rest of these projectiles, even for, you know, spread out uh, lasers and stuff like that for that nature. But still, I really can't stress that enough. Yeah, it looks like I missed one of those wheels, so... Oh well, let's see what reward I get, so... Ah, uh, I deserve it. Oh well, fair enough, I still got plenty, like I've got 3,255 beads in total, and we've actually unlocked the next patch, which is, I think is actually called the Switch Patch. So, that's pretty much it for, um, Stellar Way, and, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and just leave the level, and do we actually unlock something? Of course we have, which we have unlocked the next level for the Beatrix run, but again, I'm probably not going to do that uh, just a moment until we get to the future points of the actual Let's Play. And the Switch has already been active, and what boss are we going to have to face against with in this world? It appears to be Mennonite, of course. So, with that being said, folks, uh, I'm afraid we're gonna have to end things off at this point right there because I'm pretty much low on time and especially noticeable I need to save some time for the next couple of levels, including the boss fight itself. So yeah, join me next time and let's play Kirby's Epic Yarn is the fact that we're gonna be taking on to the forms of Meta Knight as the next boss. So see you guys next time. Later, fellas.